Woo, Chai! I love that energy to be met with on the first Friday of 2024. Ain't it a blessing to make it into 2024? Yes, yes! You better talk about it. That's how you go into a new year. You gotta bring that good old energy. Chai, I'm tired already, though. First weekend, first Friday, and you know them guests are still in my house. What, what is the proper way to let the guests know it's time to go home? You think about that? Anybody know? You know? Sometimes it's, you know, after the, all of the festivities, it's nice, yes, when everybody come around and all the cooks get to cooking, and we, the shoppers get to get shopping and giving the gifts, but oh, you gotta have some stopping sense too, okay? And slow it down, sit down, and take time for yourself. Definitely at the top of the year. Anybody else agree with me on that? Mm -hmm. Now, Andy, what's your thoughts on that? Uh, I have that situation, first of all, with the guests because uh -huh. they, they feel, look, I've traveled a long time to see you so I'm gonna stay a little longer. <laughs> and they think that's something you want, which is not necessarily the... Well, I mean, you know, we do want our guests. We want we them, love them, but then it's time to leave when the holidays are over. Mm-hmm. Which takes me to my next point. This year, for me, is gonna be the year of no, because uh -oh. I have, well, okay. hear me out, Jennifer. I'm listening, I'm listening. I always say yes to every plan, and then the day of the plan, I'm scrambling for an excuse to get out of it. Okay. And so that happened to me in the holidays. I said yes to a bunch of things that I never had any intention of going. And instead of just saying no up front, I end up being the guy who cancels at the last minute because I don't feel well. Because you didn't whatever. say no. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to try and uh, say no more. And, you know, for you, it's different. You're a celebrator. I you do like celebrate a lot. Yeah. I love celebrating everybody and everything. There's still people in your house at this, mo at this point? Well, you know I'm good to folks, so they get real comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> and that's okay too, though. Right. But you know, I do this like all year round, you know, and, and sometimes you gotta take a piece for yourself. Now, I like your no, because sometimes it's good to say no, so I'm gonna add that to my 2024 list, along with a little bit more of self-care. Well, yeah, especially after the, ho if this is your first weekend, you should, Treat yourself without everyone around. What do you think I should do, Andy? You should go to the spa. Yes, sir. You take yeah. a whole day, mm -hmm. massages. Just the day? All the rubbing, whatever they do there. <laughs> Two days. I uh, think, okay. Get yourself some beautiful flowers. You're way in, as we can see, you're way into flowers. Oh. Buy yourself your favorite ones. Okay, well, speaking of flowers, uh, you know, it's Flower Fridays, and we love to give some, you know, Flowers, I want to give some flowers to someone in the audience today. Is that all right? Because it's Flower Friday. Yes. This Flower Friday, I want to recognize a very special person who's in my audience today, and her name is Cheryl. And her sister Terry nominated her with a beautiful letter. We have a clip of Cheryl's son reading it. Take a look. Hi there, I'm William, Cheryl's son, and I'm reading on behalf of Terry. Dear Jennifer, I'm nominating my sister Cheryl for your Friday flowers. She has taken care of me during times of serious illness and hasn't once wavered or complained. She is honest, kind, loyal, beautiful, and the smartest person I know. She's my ride or die, and I love her so much. Please help me give Cheryl her flowers. Love, Terry. Cheryl, you lovely ladies, where are you? Stand on up. That was so lovely. You know now. Wow. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna come to you because you deserve your flowers. How does it feel? It's unbelievable. <laughs> oh my. Uh, oh. She's crying, y'all. It's so nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. This is beautiful. You're beautiful. You surprised? Oh, beyond unbelievable again. Oh, you're a great example of what it's like to have a sister, right? We gotta give your sister a hug and to take care of family. 
that are in need. You're a beautiful example of that, and we want to give you your flowers on today. Thank you. You're such a beautiful person for even doing this. Aw. Oh, my. Bless you. Can I give you a hug? Can I meet your sister? Where's she at? Let me come on over. Hi, how are you? <laughs> oh, my God. Y'all right, y'all. You want to say something? God is good. Ain't he good? Yeah. We nominate you. You're someone, you know, worthy of that. Y'all continue to be a beautiful example and keep on shining, all right? Okay, thank you. We are family. All right, we'll be right back. Our first guest is an actor and comedian who you know from The Daily Show. Give it up for Roy Wood Jr. Oh, they love you. Are you used to this yeah. energy everywhere you go? No, I'm not. I appreciate <laughs> this. This is that New Year energy. I take you it. You feel that New Year energy? I take it. Love the red. I, that's why I put the jacket on. I ain't want a double red on you. See, you, see, you, see, you gave it to nice. me, though. It looks nice. Now, I just saw you not too long ago at the Grio Awards. Yeah, I had the... co-hosted the Grio Awards. You came out and did a wonderful, wonderful Mariah Carey in front of Mariah Carey. Oh. Mariah Carey in front of Mariah Carey. I know. That's tough. Do, are you, do you get nervous yes. now? Yes. Yes. Like singing somebody else's song in front of that person. Oh my God! When they like right here up on you. Did you look at Mariah Carey? Oh, you, I, I gave her a peek, <laughs> and then it's like MC, MC. I gotta get these words right. Let me just, you know, because it's from the heart. You perform yeah. a lot for people with your comedy and things yeah, like that. Eddie Murphy was there. I was horrified. Oh my God! What was that like for you? That horror, I ain't look at him. I don't know. You can't look at him. I don't know if Eddie Murphy th think I'm funny or not. I didn't want to know the truth. <laughs> <laughs> it was too scary. It is. Yeah, but so, it's good to be here. I, it, it's so good to have you back. We had such a good time last time. Yeah. And you recently had a birthday? Yep, 45. 45? 45. How you feel about 45? I, uh, I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay. My, 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 everything is still uh -huh. functioning. My, my, my check engine light ain't on good? I, I feel all right. You know why? Because I got to that, that boy, that seven-year-old, he ride that bike. I got to ride the bike with him. So you ride the bike with him? I ain't got son? no choice. It's either lose weight or he just be up the street. <laughs> so I got to ride with him. So yeah, that, thankfully, you know, New York City is the type of city where you have to walk most places right. anyway. It's not convenient because mm. the, the traffic, it's not convenient to get a cab. So it's quicker to walk. And then we do the bike on the west side, on the west side, bike lanes. I was gonna ask. I want you to think I got my boy in the middle of the I Broadway. was gonna ask that, like, are you on the street or are you on the bike lane? No, no, that's crazy lane? talk. That's crazy talk. We right there on the water, and not even right now, because it's cold. Mm. My son was like, you want to ride the bike? I was like, no, do you want to get frostbite? <laughs> yeah. You go out there and do that, I'm gonna be in a house where it's warm. We can do two push-ups. <laughs> no, that's right. Yeah. So you fancy, I see. A little bit. You got the bike line, the beach, and all of that stuff. And you yeah. just, congrats, you just got a nice apartment. Yeah, You just yeah. bought your first apartment. Yeah, that was a blessing, it really was. That was a blessing. How's that going? It's, it's okay because I'm so used to having landlords and just call, hey, come fix the thing that right. you're supposed to, that I pay you to fix. And then when you own it, there ain't nobody to call. It it's on you. You got to go to the hardware store. So I bought this TV stand and at the furniture store. And it's a really nice TV stand and yeah. floating bookshelf. And the dude at the furniture store, he goes, do you need any help? Do you need, do you need anybody to come over and help you install it? And the way he said it, he was testing me as a man. And I go, you know what? <laughs> Oh, that's what you felt. I go, I don't need, you know what? I don't need nobody. I don't need nobody. I'm a man. I don't need nobody to help me install it. <laughs> I need somebody to help me install it. <laughs> I had to go down the hall and ask the handyman, hey, brother, would you come help it's me? It's okay. You can ask with some the, help. The thing. And I got it finished. It's done it now. But it, okay. Okay. It, this is a three hour job that took How long did four, it take weeks, you? four weeks. Four weeks? <laughs> did your son help you? Four weeks. Yeah, that's yeah. how it started out. Because I was stacking stuff under the bookshelf to make it level because I didn't want to call nobody to help me hold it. <laughs> I'm 45. I'm uh, a man. You going to build, you going to put it, like, do anything else in there yourself? No, I'm done You going to call somebody that's else this time? We, we done done. That's the furniture piece for the year. <laughs> for the year? That's it. Next, next year, we'll do a bookshelf. <laughs> Oh my God. Okay. Remember, the last time you were here, you were getting ready to host the White House Correspondents' Dinner? Yeah, yeah, that was a good. I remember you saying that last time. Yeah, I think I was here right before. How did that go? Uh, it, went, it went really well. It was, a, it was a really good time. And you know, you can get in a room and roast government officials and then don't get audited after the fact. And you don't be nervous to do that? Yeah, no. I only got to see them once. You're going to see Mariah Carey over and over again. <laughs> 
when I'm going to see Joe Biden again? <laughs> I don't know, other than the campaign trail or something like that. That's but a good point. No, it was, it was, it was dope to be there. Um, my mother went with me. Oh, that's nice. And, you know, I love my mom to death. And to be able to share a moment like that, that wow. special, to be in the room with her was amazing. And, you know, we talked about it a little bit before, but the only thing my mama wanted to do after the correspondence dinner was go see Diana Ross. Oh. She was doing, Diana Ross was doing a concert across yeah. town. And my mom texted me, good job. Good job. I'm going to see Diana Ross. You can't blame mom, though, right? Yes, you can. I'm just so I just did one of the hardest gigs in comedy, and my mom was like, "Yeah, baby, you know, th th this is my Beyonce." And she took off. All right, listen. That's true. That's true. For my mom's era, Diana Ross was <laughs> she was everything. She was everything. So I can't blame Mama for that. But I know she was there to give you all her support, right? For the most part. <laughs> Like, you know what my mama did? What'd like, she do? Like, and I, tell on your tell mama. Tell me, if you, do your folks do this? Like, when you go somewhere, and this is a special, important gig for you, <laughs> but, so it's work for you. <laughs> yes. But your folks pull up, and they go, so what we doing this week? I'm at work. Right. Why are you asking me? Tourists are going, my mama come up to me. I'm 10 minutes from going on stage to do this in front of the president. Where we going for breakfast tomorrow? See, <laughs> see. I got to Take me to Cracker Barrel. <laughs> I'm like... <laughs> Can we discuss this in the morning, Mama? <laughs> it's not time. It's 9 o'clock at night. Why are you even thinking about breakfast? That's right. I got a show to do. Yeah, it was too much. The president. It was too much. But I know, I know she loves me. My mama loves me, but... Yes, yeah, she does. You know, she Everybody loves you. We're all a fan, you know? Thank you. Thank you, fan. You announced a few months ago that you were leaving The Daily Show. You know we said about that. Do you miss it at all? I miss my friends and my coworkers, but the job of political satire, year in and year out, it's a lot. Mm, I can imagine. It's a lot. And, you know, what was supposed to be, you know, originally, ah, a break and we'll see. And it was just like, nah, you know what, let me explore something in scripted or figure out a different way to do something in late night. And, yeah. you know, still figuring that part of the puzzle out. But, you know, with everything that's going on in the country right now as we head to November, I do not envy anybody that's got to figure out a way every night on TV to make that funny. Mm. And I love the fact that I can just call all of my Daily Show co-workers and go... <laughs> <laughs> you you know. earned that, right? Yeah, I earned it. I earned it. But, you know, I, I miss my friends, but I definitely don't... I, I miss my friends, but the grind of figuring out the ways to make difficult things funny or easy more easily distilled for mm -hmm. the American public. It's not something that I take lightly. So I'm going to take this time, recharge, and then figure out where I'm at next after that. I think that's a smart choice. Yeah. I do. That's the point. OK. Now, you grew up in a church like me, huh? Yeah. Now, yeah. you got involved in the church activities because I was there every day of the yeah. week. Yeah. Shout out to Sixth Avenue Baptist. In Come Birmingham. on. Shout out to First Baptist Angela. In yes. Yeah. Did you do the plays? I did. I did. I did. I was in the choir for like a month. See, the, I was it, in the choir. The, 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 my issue with choir was that it conflicted with all my sports practices. Mm. And you know, if you don't show up to choir practice, they don't let you sing on mm -hmm. Sunday. But the plays and the acting and being silly, I guess somebody in the church picked up on that, and they would put me in the Easter play. You ever be in the Easter play but don't get the part? At church? Not all the children got a part in the church No, now. but that's the part you wanted. <laughs> like, I wanted to play Jesus, and they wouldn't let me play Jesus. Well, who you play? I played one of the Romans that killed Jesus. <laughs> they was, oh. Look, look at the knife. I still got the knife You in my had hand. the knife? Yeah, they gave me the little plastic. That was like, oh, you know, like one of them Thundercat swords that you had back in the day. Hey, never <laughs> I, Look at the sadness on my face. I didn't want to kill Jesus. I wanted to be Jesus. Oh, my God. I, I understand. Yeah. Maybe, <laughs> Lord help, maybe your son to get to be Jesus one year or something. Will you yeah. stick around for a little bit? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> with Roy Roy Jr. We'll be back after. <laughs> We're back with Roy Roy Jr. Okay, tell us about this tour called America for the Last Time. Tell yeah. us what that's about. So myself and Jordan Klepper from The Daily Show, we're going out to a couple of cities over the next couple of months, and we're celebrating America for the last time because we don't know what's going to happen in November. 
We so don't we know. figure the best time now is to go from city to city and kind of have like a little bit of a town hall, tell stories, discussions about our time and political satire, but also taking Q&A from the audience and just trying our best to find the silver lining in a lot of things that are painful mm -hmm. and also just straight up telling jokes and having a good time and then going to the next city and the next city and the next city. Good, we need that. Yeah, you know yeah, what? it's gonna be a good time. I think that's a blessing to us all. Now, you do also do another show where you get crazy scenarios from the audience? Yeah, Tribulations. That's another show. That's like my little, that's my side thing that I love. We, we, we have this show that we do from time to time in New York and we're gonna start touring it later this year. Audience members give us their problems anonymously. Myself and a licensed therapist try to work through it. Myself and some comedians get on stage and give terrible solutions as well. <laughs> so it's qualified and unqualified advice all neatly in a bow in like 30 minutes. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Yeah. That sounds fun too. Okay, well, we thought we'd reach with some viral stories of people, real life situations. You gonna oh, help? You want me to give some advice? Yeah, yeah, okay. we want some of your good old advice, whether it's right or wrong. Let me give you my advice, Pop. Does that sound good to you? Okay, here's the first one. Now, y'all listen close. A bride leaves her husband after he smashed cake in her face on their wedding day. Mm -hmm. Let me give you a little more context. Okay. Before the wedding, the bride had told her partner that she has a bad history with cake smashing, and if he did that to her, she would leave him. For her 17th birthday, her mom pushed her head into her birthday cake, and she ended up slicing her forehead. I know, right? Skipped to her wedding day, he took the cake and smashed it in her face. She left the wedding and packed up her things. She left him right there at home. So, Roy, no, don't clap. what don't do you clap think about that? that? Don't clap for that. What, what you got? She shouldn't have left that man. Oh. You should, the, the man smashed your face in the cake, yes, and I understand you're upset, but legally you have to stay married at least three days to get half. <laughs> She done forfeited half the stuff. You were supposed to get half the money. Yeah. Okay. You got the cake smashing, you didn't get half the money. But what if, what if that caused trauma for her, though? Like, she told him, I, I had a bad, you know, history with this. I understand. He's wrong. I'm okay. gonna tell it, but one, one million percent, the dude is wrong. And if he won't consider you on the most important day of you all's union, he's never going to consider you. I understand that. You understand that? Because people act like it's petty, but something small is indicative of a bigger underlying issue. And in this case, it's him listening and considering her feelings. Yeah, but she should stay for three more days for three that Three days. Month. Okay. Yeah, three days. Listen. For three days. You got to take that cake, cake smash, and then you just got to go, <laughs> Google divorce lawyer. <laughs> I think that was some good advice, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll take that. That was Always so get half. Always get half. Yeah, that's in the Bible. So I she... know the scripture. Th <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I got one more for you. A woman goes on vacation with her husband after he took too long to book their flights. Yep, she told him she would plan most of the trip. All he had to do was buy the plane tickets. Every few weeks, she would check to see if he had bought the tickets yet, and he would tell her he was waiting for the prices to go down. A week before the vacation, he still hadn't brought the tickets, the plane tickets, so she went on the vacation without him. Roy, what would you do in this situation? Divorce lawyer. Oh, you divorcing him? Google divorce lawyer. I bet y'all can pay for that real fast. I, I don't think that, that's petty. It's petty. And then you could have booked my ticket too. See. You could have just why she you book why you book yourself? Mm. That's wrong. Like now you're just being petty. I'm is the mm -hmm. husband wrong for not getting around to it? Absolutely. But that seems like the type of couple that that argue all the time, but they work it out. Yeah, it to me it's just from the mid reading through it, I felt like he just didn't want to go. Well, of course, but now we're getting into bigger issues like therapy and them actually sharing and opening up to one another. <laughs> But I don't think they gonna ever get to. I don't think that couple gonna make that. Okay. Well, see, yeah. you give good advice, though. Well, I didn't, I've done a lot of... You did excellent. I appreciate that. I've, I've been in a lot of arguments and relationships, so I have experience. <laughs> All right. Well, we gonna call you for more. Thank you for coming by to see me. Thank you for having me. You gonna come back again. Absolutely. I appreciate you so much. Go to RoyRealJr.com.
for tickets for his upcoming tour. We'll be right back. Mm -hmm. Our next guest is a chef and New York Times bestselling author. Please welcome Joshua Wiseman. Oh my God. Wow, congrats on your new book, Texture Over Taste. What does that, what do you mean by that? Uh, you mean a lot of things. A lot of people want to get all nitty gritty about it, but look, both are important. I just want to talk about a subject that I think is not talked about enough, right? Yeah. Everybody talks about flavor, but what about the other half of the story? So that's what this book is about. It sounds so good. Just the title, and it smell good over here. So yeah, what, 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 what are we cooking? So, okay, we're making my we're, wife's... We're cooking. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got you. Don't worry, I got okay. you. Okay, so we're making my wife's lemon chicken. Yeah. Uh, she has this whole thing that I'm supposed to make her lemon chicken, and, well, I did, and now it's permanently in the book, forever to live on. So... Uh, very basic, right? Okay. I go with chicken legs and chicken thighs. Not breast. I, look, chicken breast is great and all, but it gets dry. This is going to be juicy. It's going to be succulent. It's going to be falling off the bone. Good stuff. You know what I mean? That sounds amazing. Is that one of her favorite meals? It's her go-to, but the funny thing is, she's like, oh, Josh, you never make it for me. So now I'm going to make it. Now, she does have this one weird rule where it has to have raw lemon slices on it. No. No? No raw that lemon slices. That doesn't cook well? Not on this one. Not for me this time. Now, okay. very, very simple. So... These chicken legs and thighs, I think this is something you could do. You feel like you could do it? I hope so. We're going to find out. <laughs> okay, so the chicken legs, chicken thighs, they go in this pot. This is real hot, right? We're going to pretend that that all happened. Magic happens, and they are magically seared. Now, the goal with this, right? Yeah. You need to have color on the chicken. You need to get good browning on, on that chicken skin. If you don't, you're going to have a bad time, all right? See that? You got a little bit of, little bit of a, what's called a Maillard reaction. Is there any lemon in there already? Not yet. Would you, would you want me to add lemon now? I can if you really want well, to. What makes it the lemon? Well, we'll get to that. We'll, we'll get to that. It's, it's, there is lemon in it, I promise you. I would never lie to you. Though. What never got lie. it in there smelling so good right now, though? You got the chicken fat, the chicken skin. It's all toasted and whatnot. Y'all smell that. I'll smell it. Okay, so mm. very simply, right? Yes. Right? We have all this nice fawn. It's brown. It's smelling good. You, you were just notating on the chicken fat's all cooked out, right? Mm -hmm. So you add a little bit of onion. Well, onions have texture. What do you mean by texture, and which is your favorite, texture or flavor? Oh, my favorite texture is actually crunchy. This is not out of the crunchy chapter, right? Yeah, mm. shout out to crunchy. Shout crunchy out to crunchy. Crunchy lovers? Okay. It's the one thing, it's the one thing. Okay, you ever be sitting on the couch or something, watching, watching a movie, you got a bag of chips, you're like, I'm just going to have half the bag, right? It's never happened. That bad. has never happened <laughs> in, ever never. in my entire life, yes. right? It's the one texture you go back to bite more. That's why it's one of my favorites. Now, so... You got the onion, the garlic. This is actually from the fatty section. It's a little bit more rich, a little more unctuous. This is like a date night thing, right? Okay. This is like you're trying to trying to get someone to like you a little bit more, maybe. Or oh, maybe it's for your That's when other. you pull out the onions? Well, uh, what, what? You're both gonna have onion breath. It's fine. It's okay. fine. If you're if it's shared, it's okay. You just don't want to be the only one. Now, once that's sauteed, really, really basic. We have a bunch of very nice spices. We got a little bit of uh, saffron, we have a little bit of turmeric, a little bit of paprika, all these mm. nice you know, fragrant spices. So that's going to go in. Now the onion's getting toned down a little bit. Now, how did you learn all of this? I mean, you didn't go to school for it. You just woke up like a gifted cook. I literally was born and I started making lemon chicken. That's what happened. No, I'm kidding. Wow. Uh, <laughs> I wish. Um, no, I, you know, I cooked my whole life. My mom brought me into the kitchen. Uh, she's from Texas, you know, very Southern cook. She would make me uh, chicken fried steak all the time. That was like her go-to. What, what, like, what was something your mom made for you? Like, what was like her go-to thing you thought was the best? Well, definitely chicken I used to love when they used to Fried fish on Fridays, yeah. that used to be good too. And you smell it in yeah, the air and smell and it. You know. That's when the home feel like a home when you smell cooking, cooking. Yes. Yes. When you smell it, you know something's about to go down. So this goes back in there. Beautiful, right? Yeah. Got the chicken all brown. It's contributing its juices, it's fat. I want to eat it already. Look, look, we even got some juice in here. We pour that in there. Why not? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, and then finally, you're gonna finish. Now look, I know a lot of people don't like to add wine. You don't have to add wine. You can just do all chicken stock if you want to do all chicken stock. But I add a little bit of white and what wine. what does the wine do? So the wine just adds a little bit of like a light sweetness. Um, it just kind of mellows things out, a little bit of acidity. This, we just keep like this, all right? And then chicken stock goes in. That gets simmering, all right? Very last thing. Okay, this is, this is the important part I want mm -hmm. everyone to, to pay attention to. Castle Vetrano olives, okay? Castle Vetrano olives are like the filet mignon of the olive, olive world. These aren't, you know... Normal olives, these aren't the, the typical green olives. You so it's tons of stuff. different type of olives. Yeah, you got textures. They're fatty. They're rich. Mm -hmm. They're juicy. Okay, so that's you what you're... You make it sound so good. <laughs> this I almost mean... looks like a pepper, like a jalapeno pepper. Yeah, and you can see how light they are. Now, that's it. So all you got to do, you pop your lid on. Mm-hmm. I don't have any feeling in my hands. That was hot. Um, <laughs> all the good things. And that's going to that's gonna simmer for 45 minutes. It just sits beautifully. That's it. You can add a little pepper, anything else you want. And when it's done, all right... You're gonna have a beautiful, Ooh, simmered, that looks rich amazing. chicken. 
Oh, this looks so good. And you see, you see how it's like just starting yeah. to fall off the bone. It wants, it wants to come off so bad, all right? Mm -hmm. And the finished product, once everything's said and done, looks like this. You can add a little bit of fresh parsley. And the wife is happy, huh? Yeah, you see? She got her lemon she, she didn't get her lemon slices, so she's not all the way happy. She's halfway there. I'm not putting the lemon slices on. Not okay? in there yet. <laughs> now, you go to a lot of restaurants in different states and yes. stuff. Like, what is the experience like for you since you're such a good cook? I'm, I'm you know, I'm judgmental, but at the same time, I understand the difficulties of working in a restaurant, all right? Mm. It is what it is. Now, this is our finished chicken. It's completely done. You can that serve it on rice, well potatoes, right however you want, all right? But we have a few other things I can show you. Oh, please. But before I do that, I have one more thing. Okay. Just for you. What you got? Little, little uh, gift for having me on. I know, uh, I know that, you know, this I is kind of a savory it. thing, right? But All I figured right. you want something maybe a little more sweet. Maybe some uh, chocolate chip cookies. <gasps> Oopsie. Oh my God, they're the size of my face. Oopsie. Ooh. These are from uh, these are from the cookbook. I call these my baseball cookies uh, because they're the size of a baseball. Yes, <laughs> the size of my face, you see that? <laughs> That's a good cookie. Oh my God, you gotta come back and teach me how to make these. All right, next time, next time. You can eat okay, them Okay, I'm now. gonna eat while you keep talking. Oh, my face. Oh my God. Y'all ain't one of these? Okay, we'll share. Share, they here. They wanna share. I don't know how to get it to them, do I? Okay, we're gonna share. All right, here, catch. No, I'm kidding. We're gonna feed you. <laughs> oh my, do y'all see these cookies? The <laughs> There's some weight to that, careful. You gotta get some. Let the, ladies, let the ladies get some. Okay, now you can have one. Now you can have one. Okay, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Come on, y'all gotta split that one. Joshua, we need some more cookie shots. Listen! See, you did that. Woo, chai! Oh, where did they go? I didn't even get one. It's a crumb, man. Y'all took all of them. Okay. Y'all ain't one of them. I got have, one left. We we're gonna we split it. Now, okay, so that's done. Oh, okay. man. Well, next time you got to come back and, and, and teach us a little bit more. Did we enjoy yes. this? Sam Joshua's latest cookbook, Texture Over Taste, is available everywhere books are sold. We'll be right back. You're fabulous. That was a surprise. If you're on TikTok, there's a good chance you've seen our next guest busting the move. They're identical twins, and when I saw their videos, I knew I had to meet them. From Orange County, California, please welcome Bryce and Matt. Okay, now I gotta ask, who is who? I'm Matt, and I'm Bryce. Matt and Bryce, wow. Okay, tell me, when, when did you start dancing? It was, um... When we were just only one, and we like watched videos of Just Dance and listened to Gangnam Style, and we, we couldn't were... even walk too. So, yeah, so you remember that far back? Yeah, yeah so we we're just we we're just bouncing. Oh, <laughs> oh my God! And who who inspired you to dance? Was it one of your parents or anything? It was uh, this dance crew called the Jabberwockies. Oh! <laughs> wow, I know who they are. What do you love most about dancing? I think dancing uh, it makes me like makes me feel more happy whenever I want to like like show up myself and do some moves. <laughs> it can also make other people happy when they see us and sometimes we dance in front of like thousands of people making a TikTok. It's, <laughs> wow. It's crazy. How does it feel like when you go when you saw you went viral and a lot of people watch you dance? It's so crazy because, like, it's just on the phone. Like, you could see it. And sometimes celebrities, uh -huh. they comment on our videos, which is really crazy. Yeah. You, that had like, to be, yeah. Like, Star Wars, they commented. <laughs> and Sonic the Restaurant it was so, so that random. That shocked you? You were like, oh, my God. Yeah, I know. And how many views have you gotten so far when you uh, go viral? I think around, like, 30 million? Yeah, 30, 30 million. 30 million? How does it feel to have, to know all of those people saw you dancing? It's crazy to think that actually we actually got blue, we blew up. Cause sometimes we just make some random video. We don't even think it will like get lots of views, but then it gets lots of views and then celebrities see it and then they want to collab. Whoa. <laughs> That's success, guys. What do some of your friends say? It's, they're like, wow, we know these kids. <laughs> they, they blew up. 
Yeah, you really blew up. Do people recognize you in public? Yeah. A lot. Like, how do they react to you all? Sometimes they give us the side eye. They're like, <laughs> they don't know if it's us or not. And they check their phone and they see that it is us. Oh my goodness. And then you take pictures with them? Yeah, yeah, but some of them are scared to like come up to us and say hi. But we're really actually pretty nice, so you don't have to be scared. You think they're nice, right? <laughs> wow. I love that. And what do you want to say to kids that, you know, see you guys, and what would you say to them? I would say that if there's a, if kids are, that have a dream to dance, I would say you should definitely do it and show it to other people on social media, and maybe they'll like you, cause, and maybe you also blow up. All right, they said it. That's a good message. What do you guys want to be when you grow up? The job walkies. <laughs> yes, yeah, the job walkies. I yeah. love that. And what's your favorite thing about them? Their, their mask and the creativity of dancing, like how they can dance to those masks and like they can't breathe or something. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> they can't breathe or something. Yeah. I love that you're so into your craft. Will you guys stick around for a little bit? Yeah. Yes. All right. <laughs> we'll be right back. We're back with Viral Dancing Twins, Bryce and Matt. Now, I have to say this. I noticed you guys watching the people in the audience dance. Do you really enjoy watching people dance too? Because you look like you're having a good time watching them. Yes, yeah. very. They're doing some good dancing. It was funny. Yeah. It was funny. You could tell you really love it. Now, we know you love the Jabberwockies. I got a few people here that want to come out and meet y'all. Is that okay? Yeah? Sure. All right. <laughs> Have a good time. Say hey to the Jabberwockies. Oh my God, thank you guys for being here and thank you Jabberwockies for coming through. We appreciate you. We'll be right back. If you like this video, smash that like button and subscribe to the Jennifer Hudson Show YouTube channel. Check your local listings or visit jenniferhudsonshow.com to see when you can watch full episodes in your area. And don't forget to sign up for the newsletter.